as you discussed in the earlier uh, your uh, live thing also like on 8th of november here the demonetization happened overnight our currencies got into a yes. paper and still it had a uh, you can uh, define value 80 percent 60 percent and after that that money was plunged into like bitcoins and uh, you know uh, some part of it not the uh, much of that then after that december happened then uh, we are living in an economy where there is a geographical arbitrage too much. If it is Bitcoin is $987 somewhere trading in US, here we have more than $1,100 or yes. more than $1,000. Yes. See, um, near uh, about <coughs> on uh, where the 11th March where the SEC decision has to come on ETF or something from uh, in US. At that point of time, the are uh, in India and all over the world, the Bitcoin value goes up to 98,000 rupees in India, or you can say 1,200 plus in uh, dollars, right? And my question it is that how can we go through this uh, geographical arbitrage? Okay, very good. So arbitrage um, is the process of diminishing the difference in price in open markets, in a commodity that is traded at a different price. Right? And arbitrage is something that is done by individuals who use the opportunity of the difference in price to trade that difference until it diminishes to zero. Fully functioning open markets have very, very small spreads between geographies. And the reason is that if spreads emerge, if differences in price emerge, they can be exploited for profit, which will lead to them very quickly closing again. Right? Uh, this is the normal operation of markets. What happens when that fails, and why does it fail? Well, the problem here is not Bitcoin, because the problem is currency controls. If Bitcoin is worth $1,200 here and $900 in the U.S., the very simple answer, the obvious answer is, I buy Bitcoin in the U.S. and I sell it in India. Now, in the process of doing that, I don't transfer Bitcoin from the U.S. to India, because Bitcoin has no location. It wasn't in the U.S. to start with. It didn't end up in India to end with. The Bitcoin started on the blockchain. It ended on the blockchain. It changed owners. Those owners may happen to be in India or the U.S. or not. Who knows? It doesn't really matter. So I'm not transferring money across borders. Right? So I buy Bitcoin in the U.S. and I sell it in India. I make the difference in profit. Now what? What did I sell it for? Let's say I sold it for rupees. I take those rupees, I wire transfer those rupees back to the US, and I repeat the cycle until there is no difference in price. Right? But the problem is, I may be able to do this once. By the second time, my bank has red flagged my account. By the third time, I go to wire transfer and my bank goes bzzz. And then maybe they also freeze my account. And then maybe I get a visit by some friendly gentlemen <laughs> in uniforms <laughs> with intimidating mustaches <laughs> and big sticks. And they tell me, you can't do that. Where in that scheme is Bitcoin the problem? The Bitcoin part was easy. It was the other part. What that is telling you is the opposite information of what you received. Bitcoin is not worth $1,200 here. Right? Bitcoin is not worth $1,200 here. Bitcoin is worth $943 everywhere. Rupees are worth one hundred thousandth of a Bitcoin here. The value of Bitcoin didn't change. The reason it takes more rupees to buy a Bitcoin 
is because the rupee is worth less in Bitcoin. Why? Because you can't move it across borders. And because you can't move rupees across borders, the rupee is discounted, depreciated against the hard asset, which is Bitcoin, which can move across borders, but also against the hard asset that is the dollar, the euro, etc. By that amount that you see. The problem isn't that Bitcoin is 20% more expensive here. The problem is that the rupee is worth 20% less in Bitcoin than the dollar is. And the reason for that is because it is difficult to move rupees out of the country. The market is sending you a signal. It is telling you a truth. It is conducting price discovery. And it is telling you, rupees in a bank account here are worth less than money that can move across borders, because they cannot move across borders. It is telling you something about your rupees. It is telling you nothing about Bitcoin. Bitcoin's value didn't change. If you have a problem with that, petition your government for the redress of grievances, and address the problem which causes your rupees to be discounted 20% against Bitcoin. And that problem is that one of the characteristics of money is that it has to be portable. And your rupees are not as portable. And as a result, people will only accept them at a discount of 20% for real, hard, portable currency Bitcoin.